knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men? The shadow knows. <laughs> Once again, we bring you the thrilling adventures of The Shadow, the hard and relentless fight of one man against the forces of evil. These dramatizations are designed to demonstrate forcibly to old and young alike that crime does not pay. The shadow who aids the forces of law and order is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. Years ago in the Orient, Cranston learnt a strange and mysterious secret. The hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so they cannot see him. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the voice of the invisible shadow belongs. Today's drama... The Curse of the Cat. The comfortable drawing room of Michael Strong's Harborside home. In front of a roaring log fire, the well-known explorer and lecturer is standing on a magnificent tiger rug, trophy of the hunt, as he looks at a dark-haired girl with classical features relaxing in a big armchair. Well, Janice, we seem to be getting settled down here in the city now that we're back in civilization once again. Do you like it, dear? Are you happy? Yeah, of course, Father. You know, I never want to go back on another expedition. I don't either, Janice. After your mother's death, I never want to see the tropics again. Uh, why did you ask if I was happy? Well, it's just that you've seemed quiet lately. As if you weren't feeling quite yourself. It's Mother. I, I keep thinking about her. And I get so tired lately. I seem to need more and more rest. Sometimes I, I don't even sleep at all. Just curl up on the couch and doze. Well, uh, you'd better run along now. Good night, darling. Good night, Father. Uh, oh, Father. Yes? Will you leave a note for the milkman? Of course. Usual amount? Uh, no, darling. From now on, would you have him leave an extra bottle? Dinner's ready, Father. It's on the table. Good. Well, this looks like quite a table you've set. Sit down, my dear. Thank you. Hmm, steak, eh? This is a treat. What's the matter, Father? The steak. It's not cooked. It's just the way you like it, Father. Rare. This isn't rare, it's raw. Is it, Father? It's just right for me. Well, now, there's our movie projector all set up. Shades are all drawn. You really didn't have to go to all this trouble for me, Father. You have to be kept busy, Janice. Keep your mind off things. This will amuse you for a while this afternoon. Now then, turn off the reading light in the corner, Janice. All right, Father. That's it. Now then, let's see. Where's the projector switch? It's so dark in here. Over here, on this side of the machine, Father. Oh, yeah, so it... How did you know where that switch was? I saw it, Father. You saw it? In the dark? Janice! What's the matter, Father? Turn on the lights. Oh, why are you looking at me? Turn on the lights, quickly. What's wrong, Father? You're not well. You're getting worse, you... Oh, it's the doorbell. I'll answer no. it. No. But, Father, it's probably just... No, someone... go to your room, Janice. Go to your room and stay there. But, Father, I... Please do as I say. Go quickly. Oh, all right, Father. I'm Jim Ryan, the new owner of the pet shop down the street. Yes? I came to deliver your cat. Cat? What cat? The one I'm carrying right here in this basket. I don't know anything about a cat. Now get out. Look, mister, I've had enough of you. I want to see the lady of the house. Lady of the house? No, no, you can't. Oh, I can't, can't I? Well, I'm going to. She's the one who ran up the bill at the pet shop. 
And I'm collecting it, do you understand? Don't come another step further. Now, look, mister. I warned you, don't I'm come another... I'm bringing this cat in here. And... I get you, I get you. the place, Lamont. Ryan's pet shop. Hmm. Oh, it doesn't look as if anyone's home. Yeah. Oh, there's a youngster over there. Uh, hello there, can you help us? Oh, I suppose so. I'm looking for some special new dog food. I don't remember the name, but it comes in a red package. Gosh, I'm afraid I don't know much about the stock here, miss. I'm just a delivery boy. Mr. Ryan, the new owner. He's up the street delivering a cat. Oh, quite a system. You run the shop and the owner runs the errand. Oh, Mr. Ryan went to collect a bill. That's why he made the delivery. Funny, though, he, he just went a couple of blocks and he's been gone almost four hours. Perhaps that's Mr. Ryan now. Ryan's pet shop. Billy speaking. Oh, Miss Adams. Yes? Well, Mr. Ryan was supposed to be at your house. No. No, he's not back here. All right. Bye. Gosh, that's funny. What's up, Billy? That was the woman Mr. Ryan was supposed to deliver the cat to. She says he hasn't showed up yet. It was only a couple of blocks. 223 Street and Avenue. Why, we're going along that way. Would you go with me? I, well, I'd hate to ask you, but I'm awful worried. Mr. Ryan's new in the neighborhood, but... Well, I don't see how he could have got lost. Oh, we'll be glad to go with you. Won't we, Lamont? Of course. Would you? Gee, that's great. Well, Billy, it's about time you got here. Well, gosh, that's what we came here to find out, Miss Adams. Who are those people? Are they from the pet shop? Uh, no, we're just uh, friends of Billy's. We're trying to help him find Mr. Ryan and your cat, Miss Adams. Well, I could swear Mr. Ryan went into Mr. Strong's house next door about four hours ago. Of course, I don't know Mr. Ryan at all. He's new at the pet shop, but he was carrying something that looked very much like my tabby's basket. And you say he hasn't come out? Well, I haven't spent the afternoon spying out the window, but I didn't see him come out. Of course, he must have got the address mixed up. Well, if he did, he'd better get it straightened out again. I want my cat back, and I want him back right away. Yes, Miss Adams. Oh, charming woman. And very helpful. Come on, Billy. We're going next door and have a talk with Mr. Strong. Oh, well, here we are. Residence of Michael J. Strong. That name's familiar, Lamont. There's been quite a little about Strong in the papers recently. Explorer, big game hunter. Just returned to the city, making a series of lectures or something. Gee, a big game hunter. Oh, Mr. Strong? Yes? Uh, I'm Lamont Cranston, Mr. Strong. We're trying to help young Billy here from the pet shop. Did Mr. Ryan deliver a cat to you by mistake about four hours ago? Cat? Um, why, no, no. But a man with some sort of a basket did come to the door a few hours ago. Uh, he must have had the wrong address. Uh, we don't have any cat's here. You, you don't know which way he went, do you, Mr. Strong? No, I'm afraid I don't. Oh, I'm sorry to trouble you, Mr. Strong, and thanks very much. Not at all. Good day. Gee, oh, I don't know what to think now. I'll tell you, Billy. We'll go back to the pet shop with you, and I'll bet you find Mr. Ryan back there waiting for you. And if it's not, Billy, I have some pretty good friends in the police department. The police? Gosh, you, you don't think anything's happened? No, Billy, I don't. But sometimes it's a good idea just to make a routine police investigation in cases like this. Janice, what are you doing with that cat? I thought I told you to stay upstairs in your room. Well, I was in my room and this cat just wandered in, Father. Where do you suppose it came from? Well, in the back way, probably. Put it down, Janice. It's a mean, vicious beast. Well, it seems to like me, Father. It curled right up in my arms. Oh, Father, can't I keep it? I'll put it out in the garage at night. Garage? No, you stay away from the garage this evening. I I, I mean... Yeah, all right, Janice. Keep the cat in here for the night, anyway. Now, uh, I've got to go out. I, I I have an errand to do. Oh, could I go with you, Father? No, I've got to do this alone. I, 
I'm going to take the car and deliver something down by the harbour. I may be late. Well, get back as soon as you can, Father. Doug Hartley's coming over tonight. Who? Doug Hartley. Oh, you remember. I used to see quite a lot of him before he went away. He just got out of the army. He's dropping in here on his way home. I don't want you to see anyone anymore for a while. Uh, call your friend up and tell him you aren't feeling well. Father, you won't let me see anyone anymore. Is there... Is there something wrong? You... You've been so nervous and cross lately. It, it isn't like you. Oh, I'm sorry, my dear. It, I, I've been under a terrible nervous strain lately. I, I, I've got to go now. Call your friend, Janice. I'll be back later. All right, Father. Hello, Hotel Kirkman. Oh, Mr. Douglas Hartley, please. Hello, Doug, this is Janice. Well, I I'm sorry, Doug, but I'm afraid I won't be able to see you tonight after all. Well, I, I haven't been feeling well, and Father says I shouldn't. Yes, I suppose I could see you for a little while. You'd better come round the back way, though, just in case. I'll be waiting for you in the garden. Goodbye. <laughs> Doug, is that you? Well, Janice, where are you? Over here on the bench, Doug. It's so confoundedly dark out here. Ah, oh, there you are, Janice. Oh, darling, how are you? I'm fine. Oh, it's wonderful to see you again, Doug. Uh, sit down. What's all this about your father and meeting me here in this oh, garden? Oh, it's nothing, Doug. Father's just been a little upset lately for some reason. Then you're not really ill? Well, I... <laughs> I haven't been feeling quite myself for the last few weeks, but I'm all right. Oh, that's good. Oh, Janice, I heard about your mother... I want you to know how sorry I am. Mother? Oh, thanks, Doug. I know how fond you were of her. And... Yes, 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 I was. What a tragedy. She had to go... <laughs> yes, to... yes, yes, wasn't it? Well, Janice, are you sure you feel all right? Yes, yes, of course. Why? Well, you seem so nervous. And now that I can see you better, you look different somehow. Different? Yes, you... You're oh, that darn cat. Scat, go on, hobbit. Oh, it's all right, Doug. You're always hated cats. Uh, go away, I said. Well, obstinate, eh? Perhaps a rock will fix it. No, Doug, don't touch the cat. The darn thing's annoying. I'll fix it. Doug, stop it. What that cat needs is a good swift kick. Oh, you fool! I told you not the cat touched the cat. Oh, Janice, what's the matter? I told you, oh, Janice! Janice! Oh, my face! You scratched me! Oh, Janice! Come back here! Janice! 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 Janice, where are you? Not in the living room. Janice! Who's in here? Oh, Mr. Strong, I'm glad you're back. What's happened to your face? Oh, Janice, she went half out of her mind. She she leapt on me and scratched me when some darn cat... Cat? Who are you? What are you doing with my daughter? I'm Doug Harthy. Janice Ryer and I were out in the garden and... Uh... Get out of here, young man, and never come back as long as you live. Uh, just a minute, Mr. Strong. I want to find out what's the matter with Janice. Something's happened to her. Get out of here, I said. Well, I'll get out, Mr. Strong, but before I do, I'm going to see Janice. You're going to do nothing of the kind. Put, put down that can, Mr. Strong. Put, put it down! Ah! Oh! Ah! We'll return to the shadow in just a moment. And now back to the shadow. Lamont Cranston and Margot Lane are paying a visit to Commissioner Weston at police headquarters. They have just read in the afternoon paper of the murder of Mr. Ryan, the pet shop owner, who disappeared so mysteriously the day before. So when I read about your men finding Ryan in the harbour last night, Commissioner, I just thought we'd drop in and see if you had anything new on the case. New? Well, only that Ryan's wife just identified the body as that of a husband this morning. Uh, you reported his disappearance, Cranston. I suppose you have some theory about the murder. Now, Commissioner, you're not asking Lamont's advice about the case. No, I certainly am not. Someone was after Ryan. They trapped him, murdered him, and threw him in the harbor. Why they stripped him of all identification and didn't take any of his money, I don't know. But we'll soon find out. Oh, pardon me. Hello. Oh, hello, Shaughnessy. What? Another body in the harbor? Yes, all right, all right, for heaven's sake, don't tell me. 
All right, O'Shaughnessy, have the body brought down to the morgue. I'll meet you there. Another murder, Commissioner. Yes, it looks like it. Young chap this time, boy in his 20s. Murdered the same way as the last. Body in harbour, no identification. Money still on him. Had he been reported missing, Commissioner? No, we haven't had any report of missing person since Ryan's disappearance. Mind if we go down to the morgue with you, Commissioner? No, certainly not. Come along, because I'm going down there right now. But what about the scratches on the faces of those two men at the morgue, Lamont? What did Commissioner Weston say about them? He said the men were probably scratched when they were dragged through the bushes at the harbour's edge. Hmm. Do you believe that? Well, those scratches were in pattern. I think they were made by the claw of an animal. Yes, Marco. Just what you're thinking. By a cat. Miss Adams was the only one who had a cat. You don't think that it she was... It was her cat that Ryan was delivering when he disappeared. Yes. Wouldn't that mean that she lied to us yesterday? That her cat was delivered to her? That, Margot, is what I'm going to try and find out from Miss Adams right now. As the shadow. Why are you sitting alone in this half-lighted room, Christine Adams? What was that? Who's in this room? <laughs> the shadow is here, Miss Adams. Who are you? What do you want? I've come to you for information, Miss Adams. Information about the two men who were murdered and thrown into the harbor. Men whose faces were scratched by a cat. Murdered men? Scratched by a cat? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yes, you do. Why did you say your cat had not been delivered to you? It hadn't. I don't know where my cat is. Don't lie to the shadow, Miss Adams. I'm not lying. I swear it. My cat's gone. I'm going crazy with worry about it. I thought I heard it next door in the backyard. But when I looked out, it wasn't there. If you want information, you'd better go next door. There's something strange going on there. The home of Michael Strong, where you said Mr. Ryan entered and didn't come out? Yes, yes, that's the house. The home of a respected explorer and lecturer? You wouldn't be lying to shift the guilt from yourself, Miss Adams. No, no. I've heard cats over there before. Last night, I thought I heard my own cat. Besides, there's something strange about that place. Strong's daughter hasn't gone out in months. I think she's being held captive there. And I think, Christine Adams, that you have a very peculiar imagination. I'm going now, but if I find out that you've been lying to me, the shadow will be back, Miss Adams, to see that you're brought to justice. Oh, Father, is that you? Yes, Dennis. Where have you been, Father? I've been on an errand with your young friend. Uh, Janice, I told you not to leave your room. Why did you let that young man come here to see you? I'm very fond of him. Besides, I haven't seen anyone in months. Father, what's happened to Doug? I, I've sent your friend away. I've got to protect you, to keep anyone from seeing you, as you... as you really are. As I really am? What's happening to me... I have felt strange lately. I didn't want to tell you, Janice. What is it, Father? Your mother's tragic death in the jungle left a mark on you, Janice. A terrible mark. What kind of mark? I can't tell you. I can't. Has it anything to do with the jungle, Father? Yes, it has. Janice, my darling, we've got to get out of here. You may get worse and, and they might take you away and I wouldn't be able to protect you anymore. I've already done some terrible things to protect you, Janice. The, the jungle... And mother's death? Father. Yes? Look at me. Can you see it? Yes, I can. Where, Father? No, Jenna, stop. Where, Father? In your eyes, in your fingernails, your hair. Go on, Father. Your habits, your appetite. No! Janice! Stop it! No! Stop it, for the love of heaven, stop it! Meow! 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 Listen, listen. There's someone at the back. They found out about me. Oh, you, Janice. We've got to get out of here. Now! Tonight! But Lamont, I still don't 
don't see why we're searching the Strong's backyard like this. What did Miss Adams tell you that made you so curious about the Strong's? She said she heard the sounds of cats over here. Also some weird story about Strong's daughter. And you think the Strong's are mixed up in this in some way? If the cat that Brian delivered is in this house, Margot, you'll know that it was Strong who was lying to us yesterday, and that he had something very definite to do with Ryan's murder. Sounded as if it came from inside the house. It sounded almost human. Oh, Lamont, I don't like this. I don't either. But that cat is our only evidence, Margot. We've got to find it. There are back steps. Yes. <gasps> Lamont, the lights. Every light in the house just went out. Whoever is or whatever is in the house heard us. Must be trying to leave us in the dark. Come on, Margot. In the back door here. This must be the kitchen we're in now. Sound. Oh, that cat again. There's something horrible going on in here. I'm going through the house and find that cat, Margot. Oh, no, please. You're going to stay here. If anyone tries to leave by the back way here, shout for me. Oh. oh, I'd almost rather have gone with Lamont and wait here alone. Oh, that cat again. Sound as if it were coming this way. It is coming closer. Those eyes. It's human. It... No. No, stay. Stay away from me. Whatever you are, stay away. <laughs> Strange. I could have sworn that cat was here, somewhere in this living room. Lights don't work. Who's that? Strong, is that you? Strong! With Janice. Janice, is that you in the kitchen? Janice, what are you doing to that girl? Come on, we've got to get out of here. Hurry, Janice, out to the garage. Get into the car. We're going to get out of here, and no one will ever know about you, Janice, or me. They'll never find either of us at the bottom of a cliff. We'll be smashed into a thousand pieces. None will ever know our secret. I know your secret, Michael Strong. Who put on the brakes? Who stopped the car? I, I, I haven't done anything. It's just that my You daughter... haven't done anything. No, nothing but brutally murdered two innocent men. I had to do that. I had to. They would have found out about Janice. Your daughter will be taken care of, Michael Strong. And right now, the shadow is going to see that the law takes care of you. That's about the whole unhappy story, Margot. Of course, I didn't know you were unconscious in the back of the house, because I had to go out the front way to catch Strong in the car. And it wasn't very gallant of you, darling, but you're forgiven. Oh, I'm glad it's over, Lamont. And you know, in a way, I'm glad Strong's going to be sent to an asylum instead of to prison. I am too, Margot. Now that I know the whole story. By the time Strong committed those murders, he didn't have a vestige of sanity left. But that's what I still don't understand. Why did Janice have that awful illusion if she's going to be all right and her father's completely mad? Her mother's death left the girl ill and neurotic. And it broke Strong's mind completely. Mrs. Strong was killed horribly, you know, by a giant jungle cat on their last expedition. From then on, Strong began to interpret every move Janice made, every word she said, as being cat-like. Until the poor child almost believed it herself. Oh, how terrible to think of a father hating his daughter so much that... That he forced her to believe she was becoming a cat. That's the terrible irony of it, Margot. Strong didn't hate his daughter. He worshipped her. It was simply his own twisted mind that tried to destroy the one thing he loved most in the world. So concludes this week's Shadow Story. <laughs> As you 
so evil, so shall you reap evil. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. Ha, 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 ha.